Let's talk about the consequence of chronic overdrinking alcoholic hepatitis. If you stop drinking, then shouldn't the damage to your liver also stop? Stay tuned to the end to understand why alcoholic hepatitis can persist for months after you stop drinking. But first, let's discuss how you would know if you have alcoholic hepatitis. Drinking heavily damages the liver, and if we were to test your labs after a heavy weekend of drinking, we would see your liver test be abnormal. But if over the next weeks you stopped drinking, most people with a healthy liver, we'd see your labs return to normal. But in alcoholic hepatitis, that's not the case. The first thing to understand is that alcoholic hepatitis causes an inflammatory immune response, and that drives the symptoms that you feel. That immune response makes your liver swell, and while the liver itself doesn't feel pain, Glisten's capsule that surrounds the liver does sense pain. And as the liver enlarges with all that immune response, it stretches that capsule, and that causes the pain sensation in the right upper quadrant. Just as the immune response to a common cold can cause a fever and loss of appetite, alcoholic hepatitis causes an inflammatory immune response that gives patients the same sense of fever and lost appetite. Just as a cold can cause congestion and a runny nose, the inflammatory response of alcoholic hepatitis causes the liver to become congested, which makes it difficult for blood to flow through it. As a result, it weeps out fluid that fills the abdomen and causes swelling, a condition we call ascites. That can be very uncomfortable, can make it difficult to breathe, and it can cause a further loss of appetite. A healthy liver cleans bilirubin from blood. Bilirubin is a yellow pigment, and so people whose liver is not working build that pigment up and they look yellow. You might think Homer Simpson has alcoholic hepatitis with all he drinks he could, but he has white eyes and a red mouth. And those are some of the areas that we first see people develop jaundice. Their eyes turn yellow and the roofs of their mouth do too. These same symptoms can be caused by many other conditions. So how do we separate those conditions out from alcoholic hepatitis? We start with the history and physical. It's really important that that's an honest history. We're not asking you if you drank a fifth of whiskey to judge you, but to get to a diagnosis. When we're looking at a patient, we're finding those characteristic skin changes, swelling of the abdomen, seeing what their muscle tone is. Do they have a tremor? What is their cognition? After history and physical, the third factor is lab tests. When we start with basic lab tests. We look at the liver function and we'll see evidence that liver cells are being damaged. We'll see that the bilirubin is high that matches that yellow hue of the skin. And we'll see the proteins that the liver makes is low. So we'll often see that the white blood cell count is high. We'll see that the platelets are low and that reflects some of the damage of alcohol to the bone marrow and also reflects the relationship between the liver and the spleen. When we look at the kidneys, we may see that they're also damaged and that the patient's electrolytes may be abnormal. The liver is also responsible for making the factors that help our blood to clot. And so we measure the function of those as well. We want to exclude any viral hepatitis because that's another common cause for liver disease. The liver plays a central role in the immune system. And so a person with chronic liver disease is essentially immunosuppressed. So we have to make a very careful evaluation whether a patient presenting with hepatitis has any kind of infection. A fourth factor after lab tests is imaging. We often like to get an ultrasound of the liver so we can evaluate its size. We can see the flow of blood through the liver. And we can also evaluate its neighbors like the spleen to see if it's enlarged. It's also helpful to see if there's any fluid surrounding the liver, which if there is, we can withdraw some and send it for additional tests to see if there's an infection there and to confirm that that is the fluid type that we expect to see as a consequence of liver disease. Finally, patients with severe disease often need consideration of a fifth test, which is an endoscopy that I perform to evaluate whether they may have one of the most serious complications of liver disease, esophageal varices, which we can evaluate and treat during the endoscopy. Taken together, all of these findings help us to make a diagnosis of alcoholic hepatitis and provide a prognosis of the likely outcome for the patient. And this is also helpful information to make treatment decisions. We'll discuss more of that in other videos, but let's return to the initial question. Why is it that alcoholic hepatitis can persist for months after alcohol use has stopped? Alcohol may trigger the alcoholic hepatitis, but the alcoholic hepatitis itself is an overactive immune response to a number of factors. My friend, Dr. Jan Petresik and his colleagues showed that alcohol first breaks down the intestinal barrier, which permits more leakage of gut bacteria to reach the liver. Afterwards, alcohol kills some of the liver cells and they release enzymes and chemicals. That combination of triggers from both the bacteria and from the dying liver cells combines to form an overactive immune response, which can persist for a very long time. 
In fact, once triggered, that immune response can last for months, certainly well after a person has stopped drinking and the alcohol has left their system. Importantly, the liver damage cannot stop until the alcohol use stops. So if you're concerned that you have alcoholic hepatitis, please get the help you need to safely and effectively stop alcohol abuse. If you're concerned that you're an alcoholic, please watch our other videos on this topic. And remember that alcoholism is not a choice. It is the result of a combination of environmental and genetic factors. And so it is not your fault, but rather this is an opportunity to stop and go forward towards a healthier life. Thank you and be safe.